Hi guys, welcome to another video. If you are someone that loves the Birkin, you love the style, the aesthetics, the classic nature, the fact that it's structured, the fact that it's two top handles, that it's that sort of tote bag, but you don't want to pay the extortionate price for one of these. You're not interested in the brand or the heritage of Hermes. You're not interested in playing the Hermes game. You don't want to buy one pre-loved because it's double or triple the price. And you don't want to go out and buy a fake. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. So if you're somebody that likes the aesthetics and you'd like to know some alternatives, I have got you covered. So keep watching because I'm going to tell you there's about, oh, I've got an array of bags that are a good alternative. Not a dupe, so not exactly like it, and not a fake. No, 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 not a replica. We're talking about alternative types of bags. All different price points, all different brands. I think I've got five brands to talk about. So don't worry, guys, I've got you covered. Whatever your, whatever your budget, whatever you're wanting, I've got you covered. Let's get going. So guys, I have been scouring, researching, shopping, doing all the good stuff to try and come up with some alternatives for the absolutely beautiful Birkin. Now this is the 35, the Birkin 35, which is actually a very big, quite heavy bag. So bear that in mind as we go forward. This is the Birkin 30. So I'll just show you the difference between the two. And we're gonna look at some bags that are an alternative for the Birkin. Let's start with Louis Vuitton and there is a bag I actually have in my collection that I think is a really really good alternative to the Birkin and it's the Montaigne. Now this is I believe the MM, I think it's the MM <laughs> in on front leather. So I'm going to show you that next to, so this is a Birkin 30, this is the Montaigne MM and this is the Birkin 35. It's sort of in between the two, but it is definitely more, more like 35, I would say. It's somewhere, I think it's something like 32 or 33 centimetres across this way. So if I show you at the side, they're not dissimilar really. You can probably fit a, a similar, similar amount in them. So this is the Montaigne. Now, I'm not going to go into masses of detail about each bag. These are just pointers for you guys to decide which you like it has the similarities as in it's got the two top handles now these handles actually took in and i've talked about this in other videos i have no idea why they do because when you put the shoulder strap on this you have to put it on the inside of the of the handles diagonally here and it makes these stand up so i have no idea what the purpose of those um going in is however I've only ever used this as a top handle bag. I don't use a shoulder strap. The Birkin does not have a shoulder strap as we know. So if we are looking for an alternative, most of these either won't have a shoulder strap or if they do have a shoulder strap, that is a bonus. And that is not what we're looking for. We're looking for a two top handled bag that's reasonably structured. So this is a fantastic alternative. I am not sure. I'm gonna link below the ones that they do in LV now because I don't think they do this exact one anymore in the on prompt leather you definitely can still get it I think in the monogram however there's one called the Palais I think it's called the Grand Palais which looks like um, the newer version of this in Louis Vuitton so also I went into Louis Vuitton today and I had a look at this bag now just have a look here I'm going to put the pictures here I haven't seen this before now whether it's quite new or whether I just haven't gravitated towards it, I don't know. But it's called On My Side. I think it's the On My Side tote. I'll put it on the screen here. But this bag, honestly, it's absolutely beautiful. And I did a shot, I did a mod shot in store of it side by side with my Birkin 35. Because I thought if I take my Birkin 35, then at least you guys can see the mod shots of them um, side by side. And I really like this bag. It felt very light. The Birkin 35 is heavy. It's heavy, but without anything in it, the On My Side, <laughs> it was called On My Side, I think. Um, yeah, it felt very light. 
so that's a good start it had a beautiful interior it's like a mustardy yellowy amber sort of color it was really really lovely and then it had a clasp that went through so you could pull the bag uh, for security and then it had a pocket on the front with a little magnetic um, clasp it was really lovely and the one I liked was the old leather one and it had um, LVs embossed at the side in velvet and oh now there is a version I put some pictures here that I found on the website since which has monogram at the side so it's black leather at the front and then it's got monogram at the side and it's got another different colour trim at the top. Now I didn't like that one as much just because it was a bit busier and I quite like plain. <laughs> boring. But anyway, I like classic and boring. Anyway, so yeah, that was a really, really lovely bag and I think that would be a really good alternative. It did have a shoulder strap as well. So again, added bonus and that clipped on either side. So not one of these awkward ones that go in between and diagonal and they're a real pain. This one just went to the side. So check that one out, guys. If you're looking for something like the Birkin, the LV on my side is a really, really yeah really interesting one the price i think was around about 3400 so expensive but again completely completely different price point to the birkin okay i then went into mulberry because for me mulberry the quintessentially english they are the leather's beautiful the styles are very classic and yeah you could say in some respects that um a couple of their styles are not dissimilar to the Birkin. So maybe the Bayswater comes to mind and the Zip Bayswater. Now I managed to try on a Bayswater and this is the first time I've ever even picked one up which is crazy because I've been out forever but I've never ever had a Bayswater. And yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I think about it. Here's some mod shots here. It felt very bulky. It wasn't as heavy as I thought it was going to be. But it just felt it felt quite rounded and felt quite boxy. Not massively comfortable. I did try the biggest one on though. I think it was the biggest one. Um, and you can see them side by side. It was it was a comparable size to the Birkin 35. Yeah, it wasn't really for me. I think the base water gets cuter. <laughs> The smaller it gets so like the mini bays water and the small bays water are absolutely beautiful um but the large one i don't know if that's that's classed as large or extra large or i'm not even sure the terminology but yeah i think in that size it just felt boxy and bulky so yeah i think it's a fantastic alternative i think mulberry is beautiful and I don't think I think if you love the style, I don't think that you would be disappointed with Mulberry at all. Price point around about a thousand pounds, I think, for the larger ones, which for a full leather bag, a high-end brand, I think it's pretty good value. So if you're looking at Mulberry and the price point around there, I think the Bayswater or the Zip Bayswater as well, I think they're definite really good alternatives. On to Prada, well up north where where i live there aren't many stores um for me to see a full range of saint laurent and givenchy and prada and that all those and fendi there's nothing at all um so it's very hard to see a full range of all of these types of bags however i did manage to see in prada there was two bags there was one um and i don't know if it's just called the tote bag it's not the the hobo bag that i was looking at before it is more, I'll put a picture here, it's more of a square tote bag, a bit more like the book tote style of bag, but in leather. Reminded me a little bit of the on the go uh, Louis Vuitton bag. And I have to say, I think Steph from Handbag Holic, I think she has mentioned this um, in one of her videos and it is beautiful. I have to say, it feels extremely light and yeah the leather felt really really lovely i'm actually very surprised by um, prada since i started looking at the hobo bag yeah my eyes have been a little bit open towards prada and i think this tote bag is really lovely i think it's more of an alternative to the dior book tote than the birkin i have to say you can see yeah i'll put some mod shots but yeah this is you know you can pull it in it's it's sort of a tote bag but it's not like a boxy 
completely square and open tote bag like the Dior uh, book tote and I think the Prada book tote um, whatever you call it the tote bag um, is more like that however if you are wanting something that's two top handles you know a squarish sort of size and style yeah maybe that is an alternative I know there's one called the Galleria but I yeah that wasn't available for me to look at there's um, one thing for sure it's been very hard to find some alternatives for the Birkin um, whilst I've been shopping because yeah everything is mini bags or little camera bags or we're going towards a hobo bag which I did a video around about Christmas time that I'll link up here talking about trends that I think are going to go into 2023 and in then I said we we're going away from the boxy tote bags into more um, slouchy hobo bags and I think yeah I think it's just showing that there's a lot of hobo styles bigger and smaller um, but yeah there, there isn't a lot of the bigger tote bags um, other than the ones that the classic ones that are always going to be around like the book tote like the um, on the go the Louis Vuitton on the go those sort of ones so it's quite hard to find some alternatives I have to say However, in Harvey Nichols, I managed to see in Saint Laurent, um, I think it's called the Sac de Jour, and it's the first time I've got my hands on one. And they only had one in store, and it was in a really pale colour. It wouldn't be my choice at all. However, it gave you an insight into the style, the feel, um, just the aesthetics in general. And again, I'll put some pictures here, and you can see here, yeah it it felt even a little bit bigger than the the Birkin 35 and I had a few things in my Birkin 35 and it felt extremely heavy today I had all my usual things and I also had my agenda which always always makes my bags heavy but the sac de jour felt extremely heavy yeah it, it definitely would not be for me however I wanted to show you guys in case that was one that um yeah that you wanted to see so I was struggling really to find any others until I came across Givenchy and I thought you know the Antigona is an absolute classic and I know it's been out for years and I know it's probably been done and gone but that's when I become slightly more interested in them when I think that you know you don't see them everywhere and not everybody's talking about them all the time and actually I picked one up for pretty much the first time ever and actually it's a very very beautiful bag it is big and boxy but you can see again I did um, a mod shop with my Birkin 35 and it's a really good alternative and again you get the shoulder strap as a bonus on that one um, I did like it very much but the one that really surprised me more than any other was the soft Antigona and I think this is what this one's called and they only had one in a light colour again for me to try but it was super light it didn't feel heavy at all it felt really really comfortable the leather felt lovely I was super super surprised by Givenchy I'm not sure I would ever buy one but yeah if you are looking for an alternative for the Birkin check out Givenchy because yeah I have to say I was pleasantly surprised so which would I choose if I was choosing an alternative for the Birkin well truth be told that's probably where this one came from back in the day this I bought this years and years and years before I even had the Birkin on my radar as being able to you know potentially have a Birkin and I've absolutely loved this bag so yeah for me anything in the on prompt leather would be an absolute yes for me I really liked the new was it called on my side bag I really really liked that I had something about it so that would be a definite contender for me and the other one I honestly I was very surprised with the Givenchy honestly the soft Antigona it's the first time I've looked at them yeah I really liked it so which would I buy it would either be the on my side Louis Vuitton or the soft Antigona Givenchy they would be my choices all depends on price point all depends on what ga what you guys want to spend but they are two absolute winners. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to see my previous video, I'll put it here. And other than that, I'll see you on another one.